Good evening, church. Hope all of you are doing good. Tell to your neighbor that Jesus is the king. And what's the good news? You are the son and daughter of king of kings. And that's a happy news, isn't it? Today is Palm Sunday. We are celebrating Palm Sunday, just remembering that even today, Jesus is the Lord. He is the one who gives us victory. And let's get into the word with a small word of prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we praise the mighty and glorious name, Lord. We thank you for this time, Lord Master. As we listen to your word, Lord, anoint me, Master. Let this lips of clay speak your word boldly, Lord, declaring the word of God. Holy Spirit, God, thank you for preparing each and every heart to receive this word today, Lord. We praise you, we give you glory, you alone be glorified in everything that we do. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. So we have already listened to your sermon, which is Victory in Christ. How we can overcome from sin, how Holy Spirit God helps us, and we can be victorious only with Christ. So it's going to be a little extension of the sermon that your sister has taken. So to be victorious, there is a price to be paid. You might be saying, Jesus has already paid the price. So do I have to pay any price? Yes, there is a price for us to pay to see that victory in our life. So, as Palm Sunday, we know that those days in Jerusalem, Jesus was just not recognized as carpenter, rabbi. He was recognized as a king that day. And after a week, during that week, we know that Jesus was preparing for the purpose that he was sent to this world, that is the crucifixion and also the resurrection. Little did they know that the day they were shouting that day, Hosanna, Hosanna, they were thinking in a worldly sense uh, that he is the one that is going to save them from the Roman Empire. That's why they were calling him save. Uh, the Hosanna word is actually save now. Uh, if you see in Psalms 118, you will see that save now and give us the prosperity now. Because a priest can give you a word of encouragement, but a king can give you some inheritance. How many of you believe that? So they were saying save now and give us uh, that prosperity, that thing that we have been waiting for. Little did they know that he didn't just come to save the people in Jerusalem, but he came to save the entire mankind from the sins, from the penalty of our sins, which is death. So they were rejoicing, calling him Hosanna. And this also brings the fulfillment of the prophecy that we see in Zechariah 9.9, uh, where where we see that very lowly uh, Jesus was riding on the donkey and was being greatly rejoiced in Jerusalem. So during this week, Jesus is preparing for the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate fulfillment that is to deliver us, not only deliver us, but give us that victorious life that we have been waiting for. The purpose of God had to be fulfilled. This is that week of fulfillment. So if for the victory that we have received from God, for us to experience that victory in Christ, which is through Christ, even if you see the, the, the victory that Christ has gained, on that cross was not easy. That's why we see in, uh, while he was preparing also, there's a lot of agony, but he surrendered himself to that will of God. Galatians 1, 4, turn with me, where it says, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us 
from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father. The word here says is, who gave himself. So, for whom did he give himself? For our sins. It was not for his sins because he had no sin in him. He was the only one who had no sin. That's why his precious blood was shed for a once for a all settlement of the entire mankind. Earlier in Old Testament, how it was? Depending on the type of sin that you committed, you had to get the animal. But Jesus was the one who was holy sacrifice that was sacrificed for all of us, which says, who gave himself. I want you to concentrate on the term gave. He didn't give himself for himself, but he gave himself for others. And what was it? According to the will of the Father, the God. So why is it so important for us to know about this is when Jesus gave himself, he wants us to be his imitators, right? He wants us to be his imitators when we are living in this world. In Matthew 16, 24, we see that whoever wants to be my disciple, they must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me, they will find it. So God is saying that you got the same thing what God has done on cross. He has denied himself and given up for others. God is expecting us to do the same as his disciples, as believers in Christ, as somebody who would want to follow Jesus. He's saying you need to deny yourself. If you are after this life, we know that in the world that we live, in the selfie world that we live, elevating self is the norm of the society, right? But God is asking us to put that self aside. He's asking us to deny self. How do you, how do you deny yourself? What do you understand by denying yourself? Let's see through the word of God. The first thing is you need to have a kingdom first mentality, which means that whatever decisions you're making, whatever actions are following those decisions, they are kingdom oriented. Uh, we know that in Matthew 6, 33, everybody knows this word, which says that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So when, if God is telling us to do something first, God expects us to do that first. It's not that you take care of your life, you do all the things or uh, whatever pertains to your life here in this world and then do the things of God. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. It's just not doing things for the expansion of the kingdom of God, but a kingdom way of thinking, a kingdom way of mindset, of taking each and every trouble or whatever solutions you are giving, he wants us to have that kingdom first mentality. Don't forget that the birds, the animals out there, they're not worried about from where is their meal coming from. Are they worrying? Are you not more important than those birds? God definitely knows that you all, you, we all need that. We all need those things for survival. But God for a reason is saying that, but you seek the kingdom first. Have that kingdom mentality first. So the way you're thinking, the way your actions are, the way even you're giving. What does word of God say about giving? When you're giving uh, the tenth, the tithe goes to the, king, to the kingdom, right? To the God. In Malachi, Malachi, you see that if you're not giving the tithe, you are called as robbers. That's what the word of God says. Irrespective of uh, how much you're earning, God wants us to take that tithe first, separate that for him. Do you, re do you think God really needs our money? 
the one who has created the universe, the one who has created you and me in his own image, do you think that he needs our money? He is doing this again so that it can be a blessing to us. Whenever we are taking that tithe and sowing into the kingdom, the, the principle of uh, sowing and reaping harvest is settled forever in the kingdom of God. So, when God is asking us to take out that tithe and give into the kingdom, He is going to bless your giving. So, ultimately whatever you have is going to be blessed when you first do the things that God asks you to do. So, that's what we even see when Jesus started His ministry also. The first thing that He said was, Repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. So, we have seen how we need to have this kingdom first mentality. Then getting to the second one which is obedience in all times. That's what, that's what we have seen in Christ. As imitators of Christ, God expects us to do the same. So if, uh, even with Christ, we see that any decision that he has made, anything that he did on the, on the planet earth, it was only once he, get, he got confirmation from Father. He said, I have done nothing. I am doing whatever I have listened from my father. So, obedience in all times, obedience when all things are favorable is very easy, isn't it? But obedience in all circumstances, what drives us to that level of obedience where we are not worried about the external factors is the relationship that we have with God. Yes, if God, if Jesus himself, who is part of the Trinity, had to spend so much time to know the will of God, to work that will of God on this earth, we also need to have that relationship. Because with relationship, there is trust. With trust, there is that obedience to do what they have said. If somebody, a stranger comes and tells you something, will you be able to, willing to do what he says? We usually don't, right? Unless and if it is your sibling, if it is your wife, if it is your friend, because you know them, because you trust them, whatever they say, you, you would want to do it because you trust their decisions, right? In the same way, God is willing to guide us in each and everything if we go to him, if we go to him to have that relationship, it's not that uh, you need to spend so many hours of prayer, only then God is going to respond to you. It doesn't measure with the number of hours. God always sees your heart. Yes, you need to have some dedicated time, prayer time also. But even in, in the scripture, when you see, when you close your door and you pray, it doesn't, it says that God sees. It doesn't say God hears. What is God seeing? God is definitely hearing your prayer. But what God is seeing is, God is seeing your heart attitude. With what kind of heart attitude are you praying? With what kind of purpose, underlying purpose are you asking things? That is when you, you will walk into that victory knowing that if God is backing your plan, how many of you are, will be very sure? If the, the, on the other side, even if the greatest of the greatest person was there, now that's the, that's the way David has responded, right? The, the Goliath was in physically, if you see, he was greater than David in many, many measures. But the kind of confidence that David had was, Jesus was backing his plan. God, the Father was backing his plan. That's why he was so very bold that he took even just not one stone. He picked up four or five stones. Uh, some of the preachers say that he picked up those stones thinking that if Goliath, when he would strike Goliath, if his brothers would come, he has stones for them as well. So that is the confidence that you can walk in when you have that kind of a relationship with him. It is in this world when you see we are running after life, we are, we are running after settlement in different areas. But if 
if god has given you a vision of something don't you think so god will even give you the provision for it yes when you when your plans are backed up with god he will definitely provide up for it remember friends it's not the uh, external factors that will decide your promotion promotion either comes from east or west but from above that's what the word of god says and every good thing comes from above so whenever you're going through something remember that god is in control god your father god has called you your friend god has called you as joint heirs in this kingdom of heaven that is going to give us as inheritance so the knowing that you have about yourself will help you to deny yourself and put the things of god first and to be obedient to every instruction that is coming from him if you see sheep they just hear the voice of the shepherd according to the voice of the shepherd they just move places because that is the confidence they know the voice of the shepherd which means that they may they might be many people having their herds but if the concerned shepherd just gives that shout the sheep know it which means that they have spent enough time with the shepherd they know the master's voice and they are obedient to it because they know that he always has a plan of protection he always has his green pastures he always leads them to the through the green pastures that is the confidence that sheep have so in the same way if if you see uh, uh jesus in gethsemane especially it was very difficult for him to make that decision he was saying lord if possible if you can pass that cup he says that and then again what he says not my will but yours be done so every time every time as sister was sharing it prayer is so very important because it helps you to align with the will of god he was praying and he was asking the uh, disciples to pray so that they can strengthen him because that is not a easy decision remember my uh, my dear ones that it is not always easy to take that call it is not always easy to take that call of denying yourself it is not easy to take that call of obedience when all the world is going in a very broad way maybe you need to take a narrow pathway but god expects you to do that because that is the call of fulfillment of the purpose that he has in your lives that is the call of obedience that god has for you that is the one which will mark you as his follower that is the cost that needs for you to be victorious in christ yes victorious in christ victorious through christ remember you can be victorious only with him never go by your own plans take time take time if you have to just separate yourself to know what is the will of god if if it is taking time have patience because maybe you ask you can ask god i mean i also usually do that where if something if god wants to teach you something lord help me to humble myself to listen to your instruction most of the time it comes with an instruction and we we are expecting god to function in a certain way and we that actually uh, blinds us to see what actually he's saying so whenever you are going in that closet to pray just keep your ideas keep your own thinking aside and be open to what god is saying and say that lord lord i am willing i'm willing to be disciplined by you i'm willing to obey that instruction that is coming from you because why god has created you who can tell the best the best uh if if this is the phone if you're carrying this phone who can give the best information about this phone the one who has created it right the how it's going to manufacture how is going to get repaired everything the manufacturer would know it 
in the same way god knows it even if you are feeling the worst of your worst god knows how to give you that comfort yes the holy spirit god who has given who has been given as another comforter as a guide who teaches us all the way throughout in each and every decision that we make see when whenever you are one of the factors that we can check is whenever we make that decision which aligns with the word of god there is this immense peace that rests in your heart which gives the assurance because that kind of peace the world cannot give there is always this restlessness when you are not making the right decision or when something is not right there is that restlessness that you feel in your spirit you just got to be little sensitive and when you listen to that voice you automatically start feeling that peace so today god is asking us to have that kingdom first mentality and also to be obedient in all the circumstances and god is not expecting us to great things i'm not saying that god will not give you the ability to do great things yes he will but he will take us from a stage to one level of faith to another level of faith with every trouble we have seen the word right in this world there is trouble be of good cheer i have overcome the world that is the confidence that we have in christ that he, because god has overcome the world and god has won that victory on that cross for me i can have a right standing in front of father the relationship that was lost it has been established the the penalty of the sin was paid from every kind of disease a divine health was given on that crucifixion so whenever whenever you feel little low or whenever you fall please look into that cross look at that cross because even the last drop of blood was shed for you and me god did not do it if we could have done with our righteous deeds if if we could have done by doing this maybe by by lending uh, uh, by just distributing some food to some people or doing some good things if that can give us the salvation or that can take us to god that is not what the word of god says then what wh- what is it the sacrifice of jesus is just nullified right this is not something we can gain by our righteous deeds but submitting ourselves to that greater purpose submitting to that sacrifice knowing that that even if you were the only one on the earth present god would have still still given that life of his for you remember that always uh, let's turn our bibles to matthew 25 god wants us to have this kingdom mentality because as we have seen he has come to declare the kingdom of heaven and he wants us to have that inheritance if you see matthew 25 31 to 36 you you have this where we see that the first verse i'll just read out when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him he will sit on his glorious throne all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goat so now this is the day that we are going to look forward where it says that the lord is going to separate the sheep and also the goats what god is saying here is when you read out the whole uh, whole chapter there you see that he separates them based on few things the things that they have done when he separates the sheep they say uh, what he says is i you shall be uh, have the inheritance of uh, the kingdom take your inheritance the kingdom has been prepared for you you have given me when i was hungry you have given me to drink something when i was thirsty you have clothed me and he keeps on going few things and the sheep 
the people who were taken as sheep they would say lord when did we serve you when did we give you food when did you come to our place to oh, to drink then god says to the least that you have done when somebody has come to you when uh, when they were hungry when you fed them you fed me when they were thirsty when you gave a drink you have given me that drink when they required some clothes when you said when you have given them clothes you have clothed me when you have when you have visited the sick when you have uh, encouraged someone in the prison so god is saying even when somebody is in prison go and encourage don't be in that group of people where you will mock them if the people are in trouble god wants us to be that ambassadors of christ showing forth his love this is what this is what has qualified the people who were segregated as sheep and they have been given the inheritance of the kingdom and what did the goats have who were negligent to the needs of the neighbor what did they uh, what the word says is they have been depart from me the 41 verse depart from me you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels yes god expects us expects us to imitate him even the law that god wants us two laws if god really two commandments that god wants us to follow is seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and the second one is love your neighbor as thyself so even in this when you're loving your neighbor more than yourself what are you doing you are denying yourself you're putting up the priority of others first and when you're taking care of their need that is being counted as a uh, wor- worthy to be counted in the eyes of the lord in such a way that he's saying that you have done it to me you have not done it to the least who have not done it to the friend that has come you have not done to the colleague that you have done see this is irrespective of religion this is irrespective of whether they are in christ or not this can be any stranger that has just come to you i'll just give you one example because yeah uh, you know ashish right everybody knows ashish what we were traveling uh, in nellore and ashish was driving me and mercy were behind sitting there and we were going to record a song and we were already late and we were actually trying to find our way and there was this uh, stranger who just stopped by when, when we were trying to find the way he said he was talking he was just sharing his story the bottom line is he was hungry and uh, he wanted some food so i was just seeing what ashish would do he was he was said he said he just said just give me 5 minutes he parked the car over there he went and he got the meal for that stranger and then we went back to that journey this is what the reason why i gave that example is this is somebody a small act of kindness a small act of compassion that you show is counted that we have seen i'm not saying this because i like ashish i'm saying this because the word of god says it that will cause a inheritance in the kingdom of god as children of god god wants us to be his imitators imitators not when everything is convenient imitators even when things go wrong even when you fail when even when you are in a pit when nobody even cares for you remember that god can comfort you even in that pit a word can come to you even in that pit I remember a friend who was thinking of committing suicide. She she was not from a Christian background but she believes in Christ but through the different trials she was thinking to commit suicide. But uh that day somebody has got some snacks and there was a word on that cover which was wrapped and that word was for her. So remember that God can make sure that word to reach you wherever you are wherever you are in whichever pit you are if you cry out god is there to save on that day the people of jerusalem cried out for a king 
Yes, he is the king of kings. He is the one who has saved just not the people of Jerusalem, but the entire mankind. He has shown the love like nobody. If we want to thank him for what he has done on that cross, every minute of our lives will not be sufficient. Every minute of our lives is not sufficient. But God says that when we do something like this, when we deny ourselves, when we, when we are obedient in the things of God, when we put the kingdom first, we shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. And that is the call that we need to respond. That is the call of self-denial that we need to respond today. That is the call of obedience that we need to respond today. That is the call of divine purpose that we have to respond today. Let's bow down and pray. Loving Heavenly Father, I praise the mighty and glorious name, Lord. I thank you for this time that you have spoken to us, Lord Master. Help us to be imitators of Christ. Help us to be the ambassadors of Christ on this Palm Sunday, Lord, as we remember you as the King of kings and Lord of lords, Master. Thank you. Thank you for paving the way for us, Lord Master, as a deliverer, as a savior. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your precious life that was shed for us, for each and every drop of blood, Lord Master. Help us to be the ambassadors of Christ wherever we go, in whichever field we are, in the small worlds of ours, Lord Master, to minister that comfort, to minister your love, Master, denying ourselves. In everything that we do, help us to glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.